Mr. Putin has increasingly portrayed NATO's eastward expansion as an existential threat to his country and has framed Moscow's actions in recent weeks as, among other things, a reaction to Ukraine's deepening partnership with the alliance. But Mr. Macron stressed that the war was not predicated on NATO's behavior. This war is not a conflict between NATO and the West on the one hand and Russia on the other, he said. There are no NATO troops or bases in Ukraine, he added. Russia is not the victim, it is the aggressor. Mr. Macron said the crisis in Ukraine proved yet again that France and Europe needed to rethink their security architecture and be less dependent on great powers like the United States and China, key themes that he has returned to repeatedly over the past few years. Europe has shown remarkable unity in the current crisis, Mr. Macron said, alluding to the severe sanctions that the European Union, usually slow-moving and crimped by internal divisions, has slapped on Russia over the past week, freezing the assets of oligarchs and shutting Russian banks out of the global financial system. Mr. Macron insisted that we are not at war against Russia, praising Russians as a great European people who had made great sacrifices during World War II. He also expressed support for the thousands of Russian anti-war protesters who have taken to the streets at personal risk of detention and jail time. He said he would remain in contact with Mr. Putin as long as necessary to relentlessly seek to convince him to give up arms. Mr. Macron also warned that the war in Ukraine and the sanctions against Russia would have negative repercussions on French agricultural and industrial businesses that import or export to Russia and on ordinary French citizens whose energy costs will increase because of rising natural gas and oil prices. He vowed to protect French citizens and said he had asked his government to draw up a plan to manage the war's economic and social fallout. As the escalator glides down the final few yards into the subway stop deep in Kiev's normally immaculate mass transit system, a sprawl of foam mattresses, suitcases and plastic bags filled with food comes into view. The space is surprisingly quiet, almost silent, despite the 200 or so people camped there to escape the bombing and artillery fire above. They sleep three or four to a single mattress. The children push toy cars over the gray granite slabs of the station floors, watching their mothers scroll endlessly on their cell phones, searching for news of the war. Little hands and feet stick out from underneath blankets, though it is noticeably warmer in the station than above ground. Volunteers come and go, bringing food and other necessities. One mother set up a tent for a little privacy. It's not so comfortable, said a nine-year-old, Ilyana, who has been living in the Dorohijichi station with her mother and their cat for six days now. But you see, this is the situation, and we just have to put up with it. It's better to be here than to get into a situation outside. As many as 15,000 people, most of them women and children, have taken up residence in Kiv's subway system, the city's mayor said Wednesday. And the subway is not the city's only subterranean refuge for those seeking to escape the grim conditions as Russian forces bear down. Doctors at Maternity Hospital No. 5, for example, have set up chambers in the basement to provide women a safe place to give birth. So far five babies have been born there, said Mitro Govseyev, the clinic's director. Civilians have built a large barricade on the road to a nuclear power plant in the southern Ukrainian town of Enerhodr, on the front line of Russian advances from Crimea. The roadblock, which was set up in recent days, could hinder Russian troops trying to enter the town and reach the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The barricade consists of trucks, sandbags, piles of tires and flipped over cars. It can also be seen from space in satellite images, and hundreds of people have gathered around the barricade in the last 48 hours. Nearly 1,500 former students of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, an elite university run by Russia's foreign ministry, have signed an open letter condemning the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Withdraw troops from Ukraine, stop bombing Ukrainian cities, and begin an honest negotiation process, the letter reads, stating an opposition that is all the more symbolic as it comes from alumni of a university that has formed generations of Russian diplomats, including Sergei Lavrov, the country's current foreign affairs minister.